Hey, what's up? I'm Liz, the Split City DIY, and I have an idea for a holiday project, but it's all kind of a bit abstract at the moment in that I haven't started it. But first off, I love the holidays. I might even say I get maybe a little too into it. I didn't always feel this way. I used to, it used to just, uh, whatever, it's happening take it or leave it. But now as an adult, like making my own traditions and everything, I just, I love it. You know, the lights, the decorations, sharing beverages with friends, preferably out of a large bowl, maybe about yay large. Very into that. Very into it. And, and the lights. Did I mention the lights? And so every year, you may have noticed, I at least do one holiday project. These have ranged uh, to matrices of lights, uh, neo-pixel menorahs, uh, giant uh, Christmas lights, uh, so we're seeing kind of a theme, usually lights and usually neo-pixels, and that's, it's no different this year, it's, it's neo-pixel based, but the rest of the ingredients are a little different. I want to build kind of like a, a mock Christmas tree with neo-pixels on it. Now I know I know, that's not original. It's not original at all. It's the least original thing I've ever done. But, but, uh, as I said, the materials are a little different than what I normally do. And I've always found that if you're experimenting with materials, it's best to take an already invented wheel to hone those new skills on. What I'm gonna do is I want to make the tree out of wood. Now, I, it's a little ironic, I know. Uh, and what I've settled on, there's a million ways you could do this, but what I've settled on is a, taking a piece of plywood and using a jigsaw to cut it out. I know, power tools. I am also both very excited and a, a little scared. Now how to create this tree shape? Well, I'm gonna take this piece of felt that is ever so nicely a tree shape. Nice size too, it came in like a kids craft kit that was like super cheap, like less than $2. Uh, and I'm going to take this and trace it onto some craft paper since this is a craft, right? Uh, and then I'm going to take that craft paper. So then I'll have kind of like a, uh, a, a template and I'm going to use that to trace it onto the wood. And then that way, um, if I need to trace it again or make any adjustments, if I end up finding that like taping it to the wood is better, then I'll, I'll be able to do that and I'm not ruining the the original here, the felt. The neopixels, <laughs> I'm so glad you asked. Uh, I'm gonna be doing something a little different. Uh, I'm gonna use these little neopixel buttons. They're quite small, but what I like about them, uh, I think they're kind of new, Adafruit sells them, uh, is they have the circuitry on the board. So basically you have your like little pixel on this little tiny PCB and it has the cap and the resistor for your power circuit. And then on the back, it's some SMD pads for data in, data out, and uh, ground and power, so you can easily like string them all along. So I thought this would be a really great opportunity to use these because you can get the little individual light and it's all set. I don't have to worry about like soldering a resistor on or anything like that. To get the NeoPixels into the tree, uh, I'm gonna drill some holes, okay? through the wood, this after we've cut out the tree shape, and then I'm going to mount these into the holes somehow. Now I'm not entirely sure how, we'll have to kind of finesse, see how it's going. It'll either be my dear friend hot glue, or maybe some sort of 3D printed thing that can like kind of snap in and hold it, where these ha these are very small, so I don't know, or like it could be cool to have some sort of holder that makes it so that the pads are still visible, because I have a feeling I'm going to be soldering these on the tree form itself. So let's see. Now don't worry, I'm not going to just leave these in the holes that I drill. I want this to look nice. I want this to look like a nice finished project. Uh, I'm going to take these plastic um, ornament baubles so you can get anywhere. I got these ones at Target because they're plastic and cheap. You get six for three bucks. Not, not too bad. Uh, take the ornament part off so then you're just left with the bobble and stick that in the hole so that it'll be diffusing and I'm going to diffuse it further with some glitter acrylic paint. Just a nice thin coat to just barely diffuse it. I think the NeoPixel colors will look real nice on the glitter as well. 
Now, how am I gonna control and power this whole thing? Well, as you know, I have a soft spot for CircuitPython. I enjoy coding in it, so naturally it's gonna run with a CP board. But which one? There's so many. Well, I say, a project like this, the more NeoPixels, the merrier. So naturally I'm inclined to go with a circuit playground. But then it struck me, what if we take Circuit Playground Bluefruit, which has Bluetooth on board, and then that'll be running all NeoPixels. You'll be able to change the colors with the app via Bluetooth, and then we can stick the Circuit Playground on top of the tree in some sort of 3D printed star enclosure to finish off the whole thing. So you've got a regular NeoPixel extravaganza happening. Now, the real question is, Will any of this work out? As you see, we've just got, we've got some parts, we've got some notes, we've got some felt. Well, the only way we're gonna find out is if you stay tuned to this week's episode of Blitz City DIY. How was that for a 90s style cartoon intro? Yeah, Captain Planet and Sailor Moon would be so proud. I said I should probably start working. I'm just running out of time. Not a lot of time this year. So as planned, I started by taking that felt tree and tracing it onto some craft paper and then taping that craft paper onto my piece of wood. Now I want to take a moment and pause and say, yes, I should be wearing protective eye stuff. Yes, I should probably be wearing a face mask because of the sawdust. Now I used a jigsaw to cut out this tree and it actually went a lot smoother than I thought it would. It, I felt like I had a lot of control when I was using the jigsaw. Um, I also had some really great instruction on how to use the jigsaw, which was really nice by a family member who does woodworking. Now, because the tree is made of all straight cuts, I just basically took every line as a single cut and doing that kept things really simple and I think uh, just made the whole process really easy. And then I had a tree form. So after cutting out the tree uh, came drilling out the holes for the uh, bobbles for the lights to go through. Uh, now, I basically planned out ahead of time how I was going to place all the bobbles by placing them on top of the tree and then tracing the circumference of the holes with a pencil. Uh, now, there's a couple things I would have done differently with the drilling of the holes. Um, first of all, as you'll see here, I'm not using um, a piece of wood on the back for blowout, and that was definitely a problem. Um, the person that I was with didn't mention it until halfway through. I didn't know about it. It was just overall uh, just a misunderstanding that wasn't great. Uh, so, but I fixed that later. I'll chat about it a little bit. Um, and then also for the actual drill bit, I wish I had used a hole saw. I've used hole saws every other time I've drilled holes. And this is where my, basically everyone that lives outside the United States is going to laugh at me. I have two hole saws that would have been close, but not quite to the size I needed. 15 sixteenths of an inch and one and a quarter inch. I needed one inch exactly for these holes and I didn't have a one inch hole saw. I didn't feel like going to the store and here we are. That's basically how um, I used that drill bit, which was a little aggressive and kind of contributed to the tear out that was already happening because I didn't have the piece of wood on the back. So it was a whole thing. But those are two things I would have done differently, mainly the piece of wood on the back to try to prevent the blowout. On the front, though, the holes were pretty good. It was just the back. We had some tear out and the back. It really doesn't matter because, I mean, you don't you don't see the back. It's fine. Um, but uh, because I want to actually do more woodworking, I kind of took it as an opportunity to practice some kind of wood repair. Uh, I got some wood glue to glue down the bigger, like, kind of splintered pieces I didn't want to necessarily, like, pull off or kind of tear off because it would make more holes. Um, and so I glued those pieces down, clamped them, and then I took wood filler and in the parts where the wood would had actually, like, either been sanded off or taken away, 
I put that in, and it worked really well. I was impressed with it. After sanding it with 120 grit and then 220 grit sandpaper, it smoothed out and looked fine, which is all I was going for, because the back, it has, it's going to have all the wiring and everything. I just wanted it so that I basically wouldn't nick myself or get a splinter by touching it. So it went well, and I got to practice those techniques for the future, too, where it didn't really matter, so that was good. Uh, but then came the finishing for the front, uh, just like the back, I sanded with 120 grit, followed by 220 grit with a palm sander, uh, and then I put on two coats of shellac, sanding with 220 grit in between the coats. How did I know to do that for the sanding and everything? There's a great video by David Picciuto, Make Something. Uh, he has a video on shellac and his process for doing shellac. I don't follow it to the letter. Uh, but I do the um, the sanding he does, and then sanding in between, and then how to apply the shellac, doing a thin coat, and just g brushing across without picking up your brush and without going back and forth. If you keep it really light, shellac will dry really quickly, which is what makes it a really awesome finish. But after that, the woodworking portion was basically done, uh, and it was time to move on to focusing more on the electronics. Uh, now, I designed a mount to hold the NeoPixels and the baubles in place. My goal with this, I didn't really want to have to glue the electronics in or the baubles. I kind of wanted to see if I could get something to force fit, and I did, which was awesome, with the same mount. So this mount is just kind of a basic circular thing um, where the NeoPixel can force fit into the back and kind of be suspended. This also, when we talk about the soldering, makes for a really good jig for it, which is nice. And then the mount actually fits inside the bobble. So the bobble goes into the drilled out hole, which force fits there. And then you push in this mount, which kind of swoops it all together. Swoop is a technical term, which means to hold tightly and snugly with a satisfying um, fit when everything goes together. Another piece of 3D printing I did was, of course, the star topper. I wasn't quite sure how I was going to approach that at first because I didn't want to have to deal with the sizing and everything for the circuit playground. Uh, but then I remember that uh, the Ruiz brothers modeled these great snap fit cases for the circuit playground. So I took the circular one, added some points around to make the star shape, and then a little uh, kind of stand on the bottom that's hollow, um, printed that out, and we were in business. Uh, the first revision uh, was just a solid back, like how the case is, and then this revision here actually has cutouts in the back so that we can get our wires through, which is very convenient. And it also has the slot for the on-off switch, which was already modeled in. So pretty easy remodeling, remixing, what have you, which, which was good. And then after the printing, it was time to just go to the soldering. Uh, the soldering was pretty simple with the way that those NeoPixel buttons are laid out. You have the three input pads on one side and then the three output pads on the other, which is great. So what I did was I measured out the wire for, I started with the 5 volt line, um, and I measured out the wire based on how the NeoPixels were laid out. I tried to turn them so that the inputs were kind of facing each other as best I could. They do kind of go kind of squiggly across. Then after cutting all the wire, that's when I stripped the ends. And then after that, I tinned all the pads on the NeoPixels. And then I tinned one piece at a time, the wire, and soldered them to the pads. I found that by doing that, keeping it more in kind of an assembly line style, it made everything go really quickly, which is good because something like that can get really tedious. So after I did the 5 volt line, then I did ground, then I did data. doesn't matter the order, I, that's just the order I did. Mainly because that's the order that my wire is on my, in my work area. I did use the silicone wire for this just because I've come to really like using it. It's, it moves nicely and I knew that with this, if anything like jumbled or fell off or anything, people are touching it, nothing really happens, so, so that's good. After wiring up the NeoPixels, then we can move on to the Circuit Playground Blue Fruit. And that was also pretty simple. We're just using three pads on the Circuit Playground. We've got the um, V out, which is how you can get 5 volt out, ground, of course, and then data out. So just three pads. Again, I tinned them. I cut the wires to length, soldered the wires, and then connected to the first NeoPixel, which happens to be this one right 
here. The other part of the soldering for the circuit playground was I did this kind of extension thing that Adafruit has shown before where you take the JST connector to plug into the battery component and then you take uh, another connector and you basically splice the, the power line so that it's on a switch. And by doing that, you not only get an extension to plug in your battery, but you also get an on-off switch, which is really nice. And then for the software, I've got a couple animations that you can select with the Blue Fruit app. This happens to be my favorite. It's kind of taking um, some random math and applying it to the pixels. So it's going through the palette I set up with the fancy LED library and just kind of sending the colors around, which I really like. Uh, we've also got this one, which is more of like a red and green kind of thing. Then we've got this, some more like kind of Hanukkah colors. My favorite one though is this. It's just very festive. But that is the tree. And I'm very proud of this project. It was my first woodworking project. I will link uh, down in the description the learn guide for this and other resources, including David Picciuto's video. Uh, and then there were a few others I watched too, and I'm I'm very upset that I am blanking on the name of them. But I'll link them down as well. If you're like me and you've always thought, oh, woodworking looks really cool, but I don't know where to begin, or I'm maybe a little concerned on using power tools, would it go well, yada, yada, yada. Uh, I, I recommend just finding something that's similar to projects you normally do. Like normally if I were to approach this, I would have 3D printed a tree form, right? And just try making it out of wood instead and just going for it. So I guess the moral of the story is never be afraid to try something new. It's very corny, but sometimes the truest things in life are in fact very corny. But let's go do it for this video. If you liked it, toss me a thumbs up, leave any questions or comments down below. Thank you for watching. Consider subscribing more content like this. And until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY. Happy holidays.